And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Life in God's garden, the Garden of Eden. The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. This paradise was a testament to God's perfect creation, a place where man could live in harmony with nature and the divine. But it was also a place of choice, where the fate of humanity would be forever changed. Now a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from there it parted and became four river heads. The name of the first is Pishon. It is the one which skirts the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good. Bdellium and the onyx stone are there. The name of the second river is Gihon. It's the one which goes around the whole land of Cush. The name of the third river is Hidikel. It is the one which goes toward the east of Assyria. The fourth river is the Euphrates. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. So Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helper comparable to him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. The first marriage signifies the profound bond between man and woman, a union that forms the foundation of human relationship. It reminds us of the beauty of companionship and the strength found in unity. As we reflect on this, may we cherish and nurture the relationships that shape our lives. And remember that God created the women to be a helper to her husband, and the husband should love his wife as God has loved the church.